Well, the program, uh, which is called the Advanced Tactical Fighter, stretches back almost half a century to, uh, to the beginnings of it. Um, the program that I was first involved with was a thing called Demonstration and Validation, where we built prototypes of the Advanced Tactical Fighter. A team with Northrop and McDonnell Douglas built uh, the YF-23, and Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics built the YF-22 as a, uh, a demonstration of what the capabilities of this airplane were. I became involved uh, with the F-22, which you see behind me, uh, in 1991, and uh, worked with them, with the engineers at Marietta, Georgia, uh, and flew the first flight on the airplane in 1997. Well, the Advanced Tactical Fighter was designed to be uh, the invisible warplane. Uh, invisible is not a technically accurate term, it's more like a very difficult airplane to observe uh, and see. And it was designed to get into radar uh, protected areas where current fighters cannot survive and uh, take control of the airspace. The uh, F-22 first reached the uh, operational inventory in 2005, so it's been in use for uh, 15, uh, 10 years. And I believe it's six squadrons of F-22 spread around the world. There were several characteristics that were designed into the airplane. One was to be uh, very difficult to detect by various sources, uh, infrared, certainly radar. Um, the second was having sensors that could sense you, but you couldn't know that the sensor was detecting you. So we call those omniscient sensors. The thirdly, it was to be a super cruiser. That is, it could go long distances at high supersonic speeds without using afterburner. And number four, it was to be super maneuverable. If all else failed and you wound up face to face with the enemy, you could outmaneuver any enemy aircraft in the air. Well, the F-22 was equipped with a thrust vectoring engine. So when you get to very low airspeed, there's not enough air moving over the surfaces to actually move the airplane. But the tremendous thrust from that engine, when vectored, can actually pitch the airplane at zero airspeed and allow it to point and shoot. Well, sure, it gives you a, a huge advantage as a pilot since uh, most other aircraft cannot do that. Um, you don't want to get slow in combat um, because you're stationary in the air and other people outside the fight can get to you. But if you have to, uh, you can continue to turn and point your nose uh, at another airplane at literally zero airspeed. And that's where you can get off the missile to kill him. I was uh, born and raised in uh, Springfield, Ohio, went to Ohio State uh, University, the Ohio State University, uh, and graduated in aeronautical and astronautical engineering. Um, this museum, not this museum, but the museum uh, has been in my blood since I was 10 years old. Um, I uh, first started at the old museum um, and pestered my parents to take me there all the time, and, and they did. Uh, and so when I come back to this new and beautiful museum, what I see are friends that I've known for 60 years still here and uh, still being shown to the public.